Okay, so back in December 2018, some friends and I went to the Philippines to have an epic tropical adventure. A journey that we didn't know then would hold some of the best memories of our lives. If you missed the first episode, here's a quick recap. My Philippines journey began in Porto Princesa, where a friend and I ventured into one of the largest underground cave systems in the world. Then I ventured to Port Barton, where I met many friendly locals and swam in the bluest water I had ever seen where every night the sunsets would illuminate the sky with incredible colours. Then, I was off to El Nido, where I would meet my videographer buddy Mark Mitchell, and then catch up with some boys I've been hoping to meet up with for a long time, venturing deeper into the Philippines. This episode, we need to go back to this okay, beach yeah. where Mark um, lost his wallet. So yesterday, I probably already mentioned this, but Mark lost his wallet on a beach and we couldn't find it anywhere. We went back to find it, it was nowhere to be found. This morning, Mark went to the police station and they have it, but all his money's been taken from his wallet. So he lost a fair bit of money, but he's got all his cards and I guess that's all you can ask for in the end. Happy that you found your wallet? Yeah, it got cleaned out. That's okay. So my credit cards are there, my health insurance, like all that stuff. So everything important is in. So we're off to the start. We're off to Cebu as well. We had spent the first week and a half of the trip exploring the island of Palawan, where I made my way from Puerto Princesa to Port Barton, then to El Nido. Next, we would fly to another famous island called Cebu, where more wonders awaited us. Okay, so we just arrived in Cebu and we are heading to a hotel. We are going to Mayo Mayo, Hotel. Mayo hotel. We spent a night in Cebu City where we waited for our friend Gabby to arrive in the Philippines and meet us. Then we caught a bus to an incredible place called Mobol. Me and the squad just made it to Mobol and it's such a nice day today. The sun is out, the sky is so blue. We're going to rent some scooters and head on down to a waterfall. That Never mind. While we waited out the rain, there were four of the cutest puppies which helped us pass the time. Then, the sun appeared and it was time to explore. Okay, so myself, Mark and Gabby have just hired Enjoy. three bikes. We're heading down to Kawasan Falls today. Hello. Hi. Thank you for the bikes. <laughs> Kawasan Falls. We've almost got this place to ourselves because we came pretty early. Mark just found a really beautiful couple over there, so he's directing them to do some really cool things in front of the waterfall. And when I say three, look towards the falls, okay? Ready? One, two, three. We spent hours here capturing footage and photos and then some time to enjoy the atmosphere and surrounding nature. Kawasan Falls was bursting with life, full of cool tree crickets, purple dragonflies, and colorful butterflies, and some secluded crystal water swimming holes. Okay, so we're done at Kawasan Falls. There is so much more to see here. I think if you're a photographer, or a videographer, you will need at least two separate days here. I give you a discount if you bought five, five, I give you a free one, five plus one. Sure, okay. We're supposed to be going to this next waterfall, but we I thought we need to have about ten of these chocolate donuts because they're absolutely fantastic. They slapped. They're the best <laughs> thing I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> if 
Before the sun disappeared, we were able to squeeze in one more waterfall. I forgot the name of this one, but here we were, just us and the locals in this incredible creation of nature. We became friends with some of the locals and we shared parts of our lives and stories with each other. And on the way home, we caught the sunset by the beach. And I stand by what I say in the last episode. The Philippines really does seem to have the best sunsets in the world. Good morning, everybody. It's another nice day in Mobile. Yesterday, we did Kawasan Falls. And today, we're heading down to the beach where we can swim with schools of sardines and hopefully see some sea turtles. We just got back from snorkeling about an hour ago, still no turtles, very disappointed. I want to see a turtle before I go back home. But now we're on our way to Osmena Peak, I think that's what it's called. Wow, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> it's about an hour and 45 minute drive to get to this peak. We need to leave now if we're going to catch the sunset, so let's go. We grabbed the scooters and we're making good time to arrive just on sunset, but then we realized that we had taken the wrong way so up. So I was on my way to Osmena Peak, but the road is like this the entire way. Like it's steep rocks, mud. I'm slipping all over the place. I'm burning out the scooter just trying to get up there. Mark hasn't been able to keep up with me because he's riding with Gabby and it's just way too hard for him to ride through this with another person on a bike. So I think he's headed back. I just got told by one of the locals, it's another half hour till I get there and I've already gone so far but I just don't think it's worth it now, it's too dangerous, so. The route we took was too difficult and too dangerous to continue. So we decided to cut our losses and head back down. Little update, weather just got really bad, it started raining on us. Um, caught up with Mark and Gabby, they're struggling to get down in the mud and all the wet rocks, it's so dangerous. It was a good idea, but now it's a really bad idea. It's a shame, really wanted to see us men a peak. The next morning, we made our way towards a place called Oslob, near the bottom of Cebu, where we would see one of the world's most incredible creatures, the whale shark. We're not even five minutes into this little boat ride and we've already seen one pop out of the water. They're so close to shore. Now, visiting the whale sharks in Oslob is both an amazing experience and also one that is quite frowned upon. The reason why is because the locals are feeding them so much that they stay around and it helps create this awesome tourist business where people can come and see the whale sharks but it's causing them to break from their natural migration habits. And because the whale sharks here are fed by men on boats, they've begun to create an association with food and boats, which means some are approaching non-food throwing boats and are getting badly hurt by the propellers. They also seem to not grow as large as they usually would in a natural environment. However, while there are some bad aspects to this tourist attraction, there are also some good things. Because the whale sharks are coming here to be fed, they are in little risk of being hunted and killed elsewhere. They also seem to be breeding and living quite well. The locals are also able to sustain a good amount of income through this tourist attraction to sustain their families and the town. Tourists are not allowed to touch the whale sharks or even get a few metres close to them, but that won't stop a 15 metre whale shark swimming just a few millimetres right beside you. Just like this one. That was, uh, that was scary and amazing. And that's the end of this episode, everybody. But be on the lookout for episode three because that will be coming next. And if you missed out on the last one, be sure to check that out. Oh, and if you have any more information on the whale sharks in Cebu, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. My name is Ben TK and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.